My name is Vishnu and I'm the founder and CEO of MyGrape. We are an AI-driven enterprise software that helps pharmaceutical companies gain complete visibility on their downstream supply chains. Um, we also strongly believe as a company that supply chains don't end the moment the patient receives the therapy or treatment, but rather the moment that the patient completely recovers from the therapy. And that is why we've also built a very predictive aftercare module that tracks patients for different biomarkers and measures and makes sure that the patient recovers properly. On the 14th of February 2021, my grandfather passed away because he was misdiagnosed and he was given improper medication. I was a naive 21-year-old back then and I didn't know much as to what happened. A couple of years later, when I transitioned into healthcare supply chain and started working on my company, I realized that this was not a one-off instance, but rather something that happens across the world. Just in the US, over a million people die or get injured every year because they are prescribed improper medications or are diagnosed incorrectly. This is not only a problem that affects a lot of people, but cost pharmaceutical companies a lot of money globally. This brings us to the next point. Imagine if this can completely be taken away, and if for every individual person you just have one treatment that is specifically curated for them. That is exactly what personalized medicine does, which is a new umbrella in healthcare, which the entire world is moving towards. And advanced therapies at present are the most advanced form of cancer treatment on the market. These therapies have a recovery rate of up to 70% for late stage cancer patients. But that being said, these are extremely complicated supply chains. I studied supply chain in Belgium and in the beginning my understanding of logistics and supply chain was getting products from point A to point B. And I realized very early on when I started working for a large pharma company and then with my grape that that was not the case. To give a very quick overview of how advanced therapies work, specifically what you're seeing here is a gene therapy. This is applicable for late stage cancer patients. People who've tried chemotherapy, people have tried every other option that is available on the market. When nothing else works, they opt for taking a gene therapy. A patient goes to the hospital, blood is withdrawn from his or her body, and that blood is then transported into another pharma manufacturing facility, which can either be inside the same country or can be across different borders or continents. When it reaches the manufacturing facility, the genes of that specific patient's blood is then remodified to insert cancer-fighting cells, and then the new modified blood is then once again transported to wherever the patient is, and this blood is then injected into the patient, and now the patient who did not have cancer-fighting cells in their body now has had the opportunity to develop cancer-fighting cells. As simple as that sounds, this is a really, really complicated process, and the first step for that complication is because you're dealing with a biological shipment over here. These therapies started in Europe and the US. Novartis was the first company to launch um, a gene therapy back in 2012. And because of how regulated the pharmaceutical industry is, especially when it comes to privacy, it became a very large problem because pharmaceutical companies did not have an understanding of who held the shipment at any given point in time. We also saw that even at larger pharmaceutical companies, blood that was extracted from patient A, which was modified to make sure cells for patient A are put in in the blood, are then ultimately injected into a different patient altogether. And as a result, these large companies end up injecting the wrong blood into the wrong patient. This problem is called chain of identity and chain of custody, which demands that pharmaceutical companies have complete overview and understanding of who has the blood at any given point in time. 
that can be the far, that, that can be the hospital that can be the pharmaceutical company that can be the transportation provider which is when your supply chains are centralized however we've seen that these supply chains can become extremely decentralized as well where you then have layers and layers of different stakeholders participating you have your airports you have your pharmaceutical companies outsourcing their manufacturing to cdmos you have a, a lab that is specifically made for extraction of blood which is usually done in the hospitals you have transportation companies outsourcing the transport to other transportation companies and as the number of stakeholders increase it becomes a bigger challenge for a pharmaceutical company to know clearly who has the blood at any given point in time and as a result we've seen that one out of every five cell and gene therapy treatments fail cell and gene therapy treatments are the a fall under the umbrella of atmps which are advanced therapy medicinal products and if you look at the average price of a gene therapy they go anywhere between 400000 euros to 700000 euros in europe and anywhere upwards of 500000 dollars in the us i know we spoke a lot about india this morning and it's actually super cool because um there's this really cool company here in mumbai actually which has launched um a gene therapy at 30000 us dollars which is a pioneer of its kind but around the world we've seen that this is the average failure rate for pharmaceutical companies working on cell and gene therapy supply chains and the reason for that is because everything is done super manually right now there exists no clear infrastructure for pharmaceutical companies to know who has the blood at any given point in time what is the quality of the product at any given point in time a very critical problem for cell and gene therapies is the fact that your products are extremely volatile which is something we see in pharmaceutical industries regularly but however volatile you think your regular pharma supply chains are gene therapy supply chains are 100 times more volatile if your product is delayed by 5 minutes your product loses its quality and the cost of your product losing its quality in this specific supply chain is that not only do pharmaceutical companies lose hundreds of thousands of dollars or euros as these are therapies that are administered to end of life patients these therapies no longer make it to the patients who need them and as a result your patient dies a digital backbone i believe and so many other companies that we've spoken to strongly believe is the best way forward to move on atmp supply chains and there are two reasons for that firstly there exists no clear scope on how centralized or decentralized these supply chains have to be and the reason for that is because these supply chains are very very capital intensive and very infrastructure heavy gene therapies supply chains require that your blood is stored at minus 150 degrees celsius and that automatically eliminates most of the 3pl companies that do exist on this planet because they're simply not equipped to transport products at minus 150 degrees celsius removing blood as simple as it sounds has to happen in a very sophisticated process such that only certain components of the blood are removed and unfortunately not even all the hospitals in the world have the capacity to do this there are very very limited number of hospitals across the world i'm originally from chennai in india and as large as chennai is there are only four hospitals in chennai that are equipped to draw blood out of a patient that wants to opt for a gene therapy and all over india there are 80 hospitals that are equipped to remove blood from a patient that wants to do a gene therapy so as we see how complicated this supply chain is we also see that in spite of 
the limited number of players that are there across every different stakeholder you possibly interact with, because these are the only stakeholders that are there and they have to deal with hundreds of shipments on an everyday basis, they're not able to do that in a proper manner. And that is why we as a company also believe logistics is seen as a part of the therapy, specifically for gene therapies and ATMPs, because ATMPs happen to be the most advanced form of healthcare right now. And every day, the pharmaceutical companies are working on new and new things. For example, ATMPs have three broad buckets underneath them. You have cell therapy, you have gene therapy, and you have tissue therapy, which all involve changing different components of your cells, genes, or tissues. We work specifically on gene therapies, but we're also now seeing that a lot of pharmaceutical companies are coming up with a new novel concept called radio legends, which once again, Novartis seems to be pioneering. And in spite of the number of therapies that are coming onto the market, there are thousands of gene therapies that are in clinical trials phases right now. The FDA specifically has ensured that if a gene therapy is being manufactured, it gets top priority for FDA approval and you're looking into that first. In Europe, the EMA has also put, put out something similar. So in spite of the fact that these therapies are being given so much effort by different regulatory authorities. It's a shame that from a logistics front, there's not been made a lot of progress because the thing about the pharmaceutical industry that we have seen when we were building this company is that supply chain platforms do exist and we spoke a lot about digitization and there has been a lot of focus on digitization for transport of pharmaceutical products. But the way pharma has been working for the last couple of decades is you were always transporting products in bulk that were low value. And the way healthcare is moving, especially in Europe, for example, where we're headquartered, Personalized medicine seems to be the trend which every single person is opting for because that completely eliminates any person to go to the doctor multiple times, to take tablets every single day for the rest of their life, to go do multiple surgeries to fix something or recover from something better because all of that is eliminated when a medicine is curated specifically for you, but the cost of making a medicine specifically for one patient is you are transporting as a pharmaceutical company one individual unit across countries, across, uh, across the world, and as these are made as per how you are as an individual, the supply chain becomes more and more complex because the amount of data you need in order to make a medicine specifically for you is a lot, and not a lot of facilities have that sort of infrastructure to build medicines that are tailored to you individually. And as that is the case, the facilities that do exist have the capacity to charge incredible amounts of money towards patients, and once these patients do pay that money, they have very, very limited time. For instance, in gene therapies, the person, once they don't manage to get the treatment on time, has approximately two weeks to live. The cycle time of manufacturing a gene therapy is 28 days. So in case 
A pharmaceutical company does not know a failure has happened. They need to wait up until the product reaches the hospital where it reaches the patient and then you see that the product has failed and is no longer of good quality and the patient in more scenarios than not dies. We believe that with digitization you can solve this because with digitization you can connect all stakeholders and the moment there is a failure in the supply chain you are alerted right away. So there no longer needs to be 25 different stages in your supply chain and you wait until step 25 to know that there is a failure because exactly with platforms like ours, if there is a failure in step five, then the pharmaceutical company knows that there is a failure and they can revoke the product and send out a new shipment. That was all for me. Thank you so much.